Hi there. Uh, so I think you got a pretty good answer on normal directions and radial normals, but I thought I'd just throw an eye, uh, some ideas in, in the hat as well, or in the ring, whatever the phrase is. Um, so yes, so to get some radial normals from non-centered geometry, obviously, I'm just going to go attribute wrangle here. You want to set some kind of vector, which is the center. So I'll just give this A, uh, and we'll say we want to get B box center of our zeroth input, and then we'll say at N, equals normalize uh, so at p minus a and that should give us some radial normals like so um, but we can control this a different way so one thing we can do so i'm just using my local merge tool here um, one thing we can do is we could say put down a point so we have some kind of handle to control it so if i were to come over here in our second input uh, or our first input zero one two three um, if i were to put down a point here i could say uh, vector a equals point input one grab me the position and the zero point and then i want to say at n equals normalize at p minus a and now oh what i'm wrong there oh semi not semi colon there we go um so now I've got like a, a point handle, I can come in and sort of manipulate this however I see fit, uh, if I want to slightly offset that or set some more of a direction from it. Um, another thing we can do is we could do something like, so where we want to manipulate it within the bounds of our object. So I could put down another angle here and I'm basically going to create, I'm gonna be do a little bit more of an involved uh, vector A. So I'm gonna say, uh, float uh, y min equals and we want to do get comp which is get component and we're going to say get b box uh, min and we'll take the zeroth input and then we want a comma and we're going to say we want the y component so we want input one so that's our min we're going to say float y max equals get comp and we we'll get b box max and get the Y component of that like so. Then we're gonna set a range. So this currently defines our minimum and maximum uh, Y components. So we're gonna say float range, oops, I could spell range, equals, we're gonna do a fit zero one, and we're gonna fit at P, uh, no, we're not gonna fit at P, we're gonna fit uh, some parameter, I'll call this uh, Y pos, like so. And we're going to fit that between our y min and our y max, like so. So we've got some slider here. If I just set this to color at cd equals range. Uh, okay, so maybe, maybe that's a slightly poor example. Uh, the color's out of range. We'll, we'll get there. Um, so I'm going to then create our vector a. So let's go vector a equals and in fact, I'm already just thinking we can space this out. So I'm going to get the centroid of X and center of Y. So I'm just going to say um, uh, float uh, CTX equals uh, get B box center. And we're going to do that get comp thing again. So we're going to say get comp. And because it's the X component, we want the zeroth component. And then we'll do another float, which will be CTZ, uh, which is going to be, again, get comp. And we want to grab get B box center like that, and we want the second input like so. And so our vector A can be set CTX, uh, our range, our range, and then CTZ at the end there. And then we do the same thing. We say at N equals normalize at P minus A. So, so now as we adjust this, you can see we just get to have a slider that defines our Y bounds. And obviously you could set this up as like a Y range and then do you know the X and the Z components as well and plug them all in here. So you've got three sliders to perfectly um, uh, identify within your bounds. But I find that and that's kind of a, a cool way to do it as well. If you want to offset ever so slightly, so they're generally putting up a bit more or a little bit down, you can do that. Um, best luck with the project, hope it all goes well.